Joker and the Badger. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here and it is time for another champion build video. Today it is Lissandra at which we will be looking at. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at those runes, masteries, items, of course, very important in a guide, and the abilities. We're gonna start off with her abilities so we know what's going on as we go through this game. Let's kick things off with her passive, which is Iceborne every 18 seconds. Lissandra's next ability costs you no mana, and the cooldown um, reduction does not affect this, so you gotta be careful, but the cooldown is reduced by one second whenever you impair an enemy's movement with an ability. Very nice to know, very good to know, so that's just one way to get it cooled down, but basically, Free abilities to cast. Super fun. Poke them early, level one in lane. Do it. Get into a fight at level four with Nidalee. We're both exchanging pretty hard back and forth. It's pretty close. I'm going to retreat. She catches a little bit of the turret, and she dies. Uh, she went ham. Um, yeah. Yeah, two ham. That's all I'm going to say. I got a kill for it. I knew when I needed to back out of that fight. And uh, I ended up getting rewarded for what we probably should have both just got away with no health. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that's going to be an early kill. Very helpful for me and the way I will be building. Anyways, let's go to our abilities. At level 1, put a point into your Q ability. You will be maxing this out. First, this is your Ice Shard. You throw a spear. It travels in a short line, does deal magic damage, and it will slow enemies. It hits for 1.5 seconds. Once it hits a target, it will deal a little bit of splash damage behind to the targets that are back there. But it won't slow them. So, just note it. First target, not all targets. Splash damage, yay fun. It's super good, does lots of damage on a super, super short cooldown at level five. We love that. Really good to have. At level two, put a point typically into your glacial path, which is your claw. You cast this, it makes your claw in a line. It does deal magic damage once again, and reactivating it will transport you to the location of which your claw is at. It's great for using it as a gap closer or great for, great for getting away. Um, does both very well. Or just for damage. Also does that too. And then at level 3, you put a point into your Ring of Frost. This is your W ability. Anybody around you when you activate this will be rooted for a short duration of time, also dealing magic damage. Very good. You can legitimately lock down an entire team with it because it's just any enemies that are around you. Really good for when AD, or not AD, but when um, close range champions get up to you to hit you, just lock them down with that really fast first. It's awesome. Here we're going to actually get a gank from both our top and our mid. It's kind of ridiculous. We're going to lock her down as we tried to collide her, but she went really deep. We're going to pick up the kill. Really simple stuff. Leona then also shows up too, and I actually didn't think we were going to go for this, so I pushed the lane, and then I'm like, oh, no, we, we can go for this, kind of. So I'm going to go help out, right? Super easy, you know? Oh, I'm like, oh, they got this taken care of. I'll just, you know, in case. Oh, she decides to come back to me, and I hit her in the face with a Q. So we pick up another kill. Um, great for me. Good good stuff. We'll take it. So, yes. And then finally, let's talk about that ultimate, now that we're out of that fight, is your frozen tomb. When you cast this on an enemy, what will happen is it will freeze them solid for one and a half seconds, dealing magic damage. If you cast this on yourself, you, yourself, will become untargetable and invulnerable, but won't be able to do anything else for 2.5 seconds. Dark Ice then spreads from the area around, dealing damage. The ice lasts for three seconds, slowing enemy movement as well. It's a good ultimate. It can be used in a number of different ways. I think people get confused on when and how they should use it. Um, we'll talk about that just a little bit. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit later with build items involved. So early on, let's talk about the build itself. Right now you may have noticed that I have the workings of a catalyst which will become a rod of ages which we now have just bought outright because yay gold, super fun. Um, I know uh, we don't see this build all the time when people use it. I think it's incredibly amazing on her. Um, usually you'd have the catalyst while you're in lane and not just buying it outright the whole item at 10 minutes great if you can buy it outright early that's amazing but normally you'd get the catalyst your first trip back probably the cool thing about the catalyst besides giving you health and mana is it's passive which is really really rewarding to have in lane getting mana and health back every time you level up it's really good sustain in lane with that and your passive you're usually fine in lane mana wise you're usually not too having any problems really so um we do that it works incredibly well i love it it's a great item underutilized on lissandra the other reason why i like it a lot that extra health 
will come in handy later when you are diving in onto enemy teams because that's what you do with Lissandra. The cool thing and the reason why she's getting picked and played so much is because of her ultimate. She can claw into a team, she can then ultimate the enemy ADC or whoever the carry is and zero them out incredibly fast or allow enough time for the, her team to catch up and get there. Now she then leaves herself vulnerable but we're gonna build an item obviously to help with that as this game goes on, but early enough, the health is very good. Also, it works straight in lane because you just survive things much better. We pick up an assist as Vi was running, well, she was getting caught and she was gonna run through in between the turret lanes. We just lock her down while she's in turret range with that tomb and you're good to go. Um, obviously at level one, when we started this game, it was Dorn's ring and a couple pots. If you wanna take anything else different, go ahead and do so. Um, you could really start any way that you are comfortable with. Now, the only time I will say this, and we'll say it right now, is if you don't want Rod of Ages first, my other option for a first item is if I'm playing Lissandra top lane and I really need the armor and I really want my Zhonya's Hourglass as my first item. It does work well as a first item. Obviously, you do negate a little bit of having more mana or mana regen, but we have our passive to help us out with that. And plus, your Qs are pretty cheap anyways. It's not that big of a deal. We're getting into another fight. Jarvin's cleaning this up. She's barely getting out of range, but a minion wave's gonna show up. We're gonna bust a Q and get her with the splash behind it as it breaks on that minion. So use it to your advantage. You can kill people with the splash. Remember you have the splash. You'll pick up a lot of kills with it, I promise. It's very, very important and it's underutilized. It's good stuff to have. We've just finished off our boots. Obviously, sorks are gonna be what we want with that magic penetration, but back to the hourglass. Very good in the top lane if you need the armor and you want the invulnerability. The other reason, and this goes along with the whole diving, killing the carry on the enemy team. That's the uh, next item I typically get anyways, because the hourglass is what will give you an invulnerability anyways. So you can lock down the enemy ADC and then stasis while your team either collapses, since you've now locked down the enemy carry in their place and everybody can close in and have fun. The other thing you can do obviously that help you stay safe is once you do claw your way into the enemy team is just go ahead and lock them all down in place with the ring of frost. Um, you can alt yourself obviously if you need to and to save your life, but typically you want to use that on an enemy and just use your hourglass to save your life. Um, there we're going to lock down somebody in tower range, which was a Renekton. We'll pick up a kill on him and a couple assists on the Leona and on the Nitali. And then I don't know what Vi was thinking. I mean, we were kind of low, but that's three people versus when you're probably going to die if you go for that. It's just a heads up. Up. But that's what we're going to do with our first early items. We go with the rod, we get our boots, and we get the hourglass. That I would honestly say is your core. It is great. You have survivability, plenty of damage, good health, good pen, which is great. And two two technical invulnerabilities. If you, let's say you get caught and your team is coming though, let's say you just get caught outright. If you need to invulnerable yourself with your ultimate and because they really want to kill you, and then you can stasis with your hourglass, I guess that would be enough time for your team to close in and you've kept the enemy team waiting for you, um, which is an interesting concept and it can work that way if you wanted to use both on you, but there's a lot of invulnerability time available with those two items. Need them both, they're amazing. I can't harp on that enough. It's seriously, it's like great. Fantastic. Anyways, let's move things over to the runes just for a split second since we're at the half of our build pretty much talking about it. Um, now, when it comes to the runes, I go with the magic penetration marks. I go with the health or armor seals depending on what you need, depending on the lane that you are in. Typically health's a little bit safer, but if you know you're going up against AD, the armor is great. I go with AP per level glyphs. I'm one of the weird people who likes those. If you want flat AP, those are good for earlier damage. And then if you want magic resist, that's totally up to you if you want that to scale throughout the game. And then I go with AP quintessences. Very good. I like them. They're helpful and fun. Good to know. I know. And then as for that mastery's page is 2109. Here's a picture up in the bottom right. And we're just going to put it there for a second. All right. Good. You can look at it closer. It's pretty simple. It's going to pick up the double kill. Really not a lot to say there. We locked down the AD carry and then nearly jumped into the damage around it. Super fun. It would have slowed her anyways, but she would have died. She was low too. So um, you can do a lot of damage. It's fun. Keep that going. And yeah, what do we want to talk about next? Okay, so let's continue with the build. We went through all the other fun stuff. Um, continuing onward, this game isn't super long. As you can tell, we have a handle of it, um, on it. 
it's good to go, helpful. Um, if you get a little bit ahead of Lis or with Lissandra, she snowballs, not like insanely hard, but she zeroes out people very, very fast. She gets banned a lot because she does good damage. It's a real thing. The other thing to note, if you fall behind as Lissandra, you can actually always come back in the game as long as you really get your hourglass because your invulnerability on the enemy carry of whatever kind it is literally will keep like you in the game. As long as you can go and lock down that carry, you've really done a lot of your job. Obviously, bringing a lot of damage to that is what also makes that a really good part of your job and taking care of them and killing them and soloing them is even better. But if you can just lock down the high priority targets, keep yourself alive and just use your crowd control on the enemy team, because let's face it, everything you do has really got a little bit of crowd control in it, except for your glacial path, which I don't believe slows. No, it does not. But that's the only thing that doesn't technically have some kind of CC chain to it. So you just, you have a lot of crowd control really for a mage. It's really good to have. And that is another reason why she gets played so often nowadays. Also, I mean, the Q, I mean, it does a lot of damage. I cannot explain. Well, I could explain. It's 215 right now at, at uh, rank five of it. And it with 65% uh, of your ability power ratio on top of it. And you can throw these out with a tiny bit of cooldown reduction, which you will automatically have anyways. But with a tiny bit in your masteries, um, takes it to like 2.8 second cast time. It, you, you throw it all the time. It's You just ping it off people in fights. You're getting all that splash damage. Super fun. And you're going to do a lot of damage. After our hourglass, which we have now finished, we have our first three items, like I said. We're going to be building... That was a bit of a trap. We're going to be building the Death Cap. We're just going to amplify all of our damage. Super great uh, item, obviously, at this point to amplify all of our damage, too. Um, if you wanted to get a Void Staff because they are just starting to stack crazy amounts of magic penetration, you can always get that first. It's a little bit cheaper, and the penetration is great if you're going up against a whole enemy team um, that is building magic resist. Obviously, shredding through them faster is good. Um, the other viable items that I will throw in the build after that point would be the Morella Namicon. Um, a lot of people like to build this first. It's not a bad item. I just, the other two are better for the reason that I explained earlier. I just think they are much better items for what you want to end up doing later on in the build. Um, the cooldown reduction obviously is even better later on too with that item. It's good. And the other thing you could, could two other items you could consider throwing in there. Leandry's Torment, obviously you're going to get the extra damage on its passive with all of your crowd control. It's fantastic. Or the Abyssal Scepter if you need some magic resist. It's not a terrible item. It's not an amazing item. It's just there if you need the magic resist and you want more damage as well. And that is really it. I mean, like we pretty much went through the build. We still got a little bit of time left. So um, let's figure some stuff out. Yeah, let's do it. Um, did I finish talking about what you max? It's it's ordered Q, W, E, and all that 6, 11, 16. Yeah, straightforward. So um, yeah, they're just all really good. The claws are mostly for the escape ability and the engagements. Um, and then you'll worry about its damage later because the AoE from Ring of Frost, you're going to want to max out second. Enemy team is getting into a fight with our team. And it's time to lock down Renek Katon. Going to go ahead and get a couple assists, actually. Or an assist. No, oh, yeah, a couple assists. Oh, Blitzcrank got a couple kills. Getting on the board as the support. And Blitzcrank's great because he's just a good champion right now. They are going to surrender. That's going to be the game. Everything you need to know is in the description. Have a great one. I'll see you in the next build. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here and it is time for another champion build video today. We will be taking a look at LeBlanc.